Hey guys, today I'm so glad to invite Eva for an interview on my channel. Eva is a world champion of the 2023 Chinese breed. Song Li Yi Fan. Li Yi Fan. She's majoring in Chinese at university and is now in the fourth year of her bachelor's. The amazing part of Eva's Chinese learning journey is that she lives mainly in Serbia and has never really lived and studied in China. Not only does she have a nice accent, but she also has a very good speaking skill level and her mastery of colloquial expressions is just like a native's. It is very impressive. You can check out our interview in Chinese on my Chinese channel. In today's video, I will ask Eva in detail about her learning journey, methods, and she has a lot of immersion and self-study tips to share. Whether you are Chinese learners or learning other languages, I believe you could find some inspiration from this video. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. Let's get into the video. Hi Eva, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for inviting me. Hi. Thank you for making this video with me so that more language learners can learn from you. Actually, you know, I'm not really used to speak English with you. Since we have only been chatting in Chinese, to be honest, when I chat with you, I literally think you are just a Chinese. So it's a bit weird for me to speak English with you since you're Chinese. Yes, me too, but we will get through yeah. this together. Let's go. <laughs> okay, I know you just won the champion of the Chinese Chinese bridge competition. Congratulations. So tell us more about it. How do you feel about winning the championship of the Chinese bridge? Oh my god, when they announced that I was the winner, I was like stunned. Like my god, I could not believe it because there were 138 other students that were also the best in their country. So the competition was there. It was very, very hard. And yeah, there were a lot of rounds over the span of three weeks. Um, and besides the competition itself, there were a lot of other activities like the summer camp activities. So yeah, I was really, really, really stressed out at the time, I do have to admit, because I do have that like perfectionist kind of uh, approach to language learning. Yeah. yeah, but you have done a good job. It was great. <laughs> Thank you it so was much. Great. So, could you tell us how you started to learn Mandarin? Chinese was actually a team effort idea. Uh, I just went to my parents and I was like, oh, I really want to challenge myself. I would like to pick up on a different language that is not French. And that is not English because I already have a base in both of them. Uh, and they were like brainstorming and we were brainstorming all together. And it was like, oh, why don't you learn Arabic or Mandarin? Like we narrowed it down to those two. Mm, you know, I wanted a challenge and I wasn't sure in in what direction I was heading. So I was like, oh, whatever, like randomly just pick one. And it turns out to be the best, best decision that I've made in my life. Um, like not to exaggerate, but I truly feel that way that seven years ago, I just changed my life when I started to learn Chinese because I feel such a connection to the whole Chinese culture and the whole package that is China. So yeah, I would say that I'm very much obsessed with it and that's what um, kept me going all of these years because like a lot of people ask me like what's the secret? How did you learn this language? But I feel like it's I'm not that studious when it comes to studying. I'm not that hardworking. I have to admit that. I'm very lazy and um, but I love this so much. I love the language. I love the whole aesthetics of the Chinese characters and I love the culture and the food, the people and that is what kept me going. I'm just doing what feels right. I'm I'm just constantly inputting <laughs> Chinese language and Chinese culture. It's like it's gotten to the point where I'm that obsessed that when I go to let's say a club with my friends, I catch myself checking pleco 
in the club like and I do it subconsciously I don't even notice it and it's just so weird when people actually see me I'm like studying at the club I'm like, I'm like uh, oh, how would I say this in Chinese let me check real quick you know just you were upset yeah that you were but I feel like them. you need yeah. that because um, Serbian and Chinese are completely different systems of languages and they don't really have anything in common they're not the same language family so you do need a certain amount of obsession in order to like really push through it yeah i can completely relate <laughs> i mean learning a language methods are very important you know i prefer everything to be well organized and structured and i can apply them directly but to be honest if now i have to see all the languages uh i learned to a very high level are those languages i'm most obsessed with it's yeah. about more about passion love and obsession it's a mix up some languages to be honest i feel it's quite beneficial to learn it but True. i just don't feel driven to yes, do it yes. it's like when you are really passionate about the culture about the language itself to be honest is the best motivation yes absolutely yeah so what do you think is the most difficult part of learning mandarin tones tones for tones. sure tones are just are you so it? difficult there are all a lot of instances even now after seven years of learning that I get the tones wrong it's usually when I'm kind of nervous to speak or if, if it's with a new person or if I'm on stage or I have to do a speech that's usually when I mess up the things that I didn't mess up for seven no, years no, like never always, i make a chinese interview with you i've edited our video i think your tone is like 99 percent correct oh my 99%. god you're going to make me cry even, <laughs> even me sometimes i can i can get it wrong so i'm oh curious god, so what have you done to improve oh. yes the the tone mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. i wanted to do it right from the start so I like put a lot of pressure on myself to do it perfectly every time that I read it out loud and after some time it just became more natural for me uh, but it did take around like three or four years for me to be comfortable with the language to not be like a robot when speaking when you have some materials in like a book or like a textbook read it out loud you're not doing any good by just reading it in your head because once you start speaking it's like a completely different story and you do not need to if you can like skip that stage that will be perfect so from day one start speaking it will not be good at all you do need to prepare yourself for that it will it will suck at first like it will be so bad and then the way that you speak will be like a robot but after a while it just clicks yeah i think you also practice your ear to get used to different tones yeah yes at first when i started to learn with series in chinese it was super difficult for me to distinguish where the word begins mm. and where does it end. Mm. Like for me, it was all just blah 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 mm -hmm. like, uh, and it never stops. So it was very, very, very difficult, even with the subtitles, to distinguish, oh, I did not hear that word like at all. And I used to replay it like a lot of times. So yeah, now I'm more into passive learning. But when you're starting out, you do need to do a lot of active learning. But yeah, now I'm doing it very casually, I would say. You know, the amazing part of your learning journey is that you have never really lived or studied in China, but you uh, really, yeah. really have a very good speaking level, especially for the colloquial expressions. Could you share with us your method to improve a speaking skill without living in the country where the language is spoken? Uh, yeah, uh, I never actually studied in China, nor have I lived in China. The two times that I went were first for my 18th birthday and it was just like two weeks. The basic tourist stuff like Shanghai and Beijing, like those two cities, I was a very basic tourist back then. And then this time was for the Chinese bridge competition. But here in Serbia, I try to make a fake language environment, even though around me there are not many Chinese people, especially Chinese people that are around my age. It's usually shop owners 
or people that have been here for like 30 plus years so yeah not a lot of people to practice the colloquial and trendy language <laughs> with uh, so I do have to do it basically all on my own so when I watch any type of content I usually watch it in Chinese and when I do have to like look up something on Google, I usually do it on Baidu and I try to do it in Chinese uh, that way I'm forcing myself to use it all the time every single day, even though that type of learning isn't like very active, it's very passive but I do prefer to do it that way because I did mention I'm kind of lazy so active studying for me never ever surpasses like an hour and a half yeah, it's mostly just passively watching content, passively checking words and then whenever I see something or think of a situation that I might not be able to express in Chinese, I always write it down and then when I see my Chinese friends or my Chinese teacher that I do have on my italki, the platform, I do always like ask her how would I say these and these things in Chinese even though nowadays because I have gotten to a certain level of Chinese that is like advanced so the situations that I cannot express by my own are very very specific so I do have to like tell her the context that is like five minutes and I don't know a single word so I have to explain to her like the whole thing and then uh, yeah yeah but it still helps to know the specific word because I could just easily stop here and be like, oh, I'm able to converse, I'm able to have good relationships with Chinese people and they're able to understand, understand me just fine but I feel like I'm doing the same words over and over again so I do need to improve my vocabulary in order to have that exact word that I want to say so yeah, I'm working more on vocabulary rather than anything else that's what I love about the Chinese language in particular is like learning it is after some time is just vocabulary it's just adding the puzzle and that's it because other languages let's say French you're still learning a lot of the grammar and the complex grammar structures that are able to express different things but for Chinese it's like just vocab and when you learn that word you just put it in a sentence and that's it you don't need to conjugate you don't need to do this just yeah. Yes, love that yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. it's very interesting you mentioned that uh, you didn't do a lot of uh, active learning but you prefer some immersion exercises for example what kind of a content do you watch I love the Tipashu talk show. Yeah, and I love those type of talk shows or debate shows in particular. Uh, Tipashu is a debate show, and that is such a perfect material for learning Chinese and for learning exactly what I want to learn, which is like the advanced ways to say the same thing. Why are watching this kind of a show? Mm -hmm. How do you learn? Did you post? Did you take notes or repeat? Mm -hmm. Or what do you do? At first, I took a lot of notes. I basically uh, wrote down every single sentence that I found useful. But now that I have gotten to a level where I'm really comfortable with my Chinese, I feel like I can express a lot of the um, thoughts that I have. So uh, the only thing that I do nowadays is just sometimes repeat the sentence that I hear. Uh, that is. Uh, a sentence that uh, the sentence structure is not the one that I would use per se or there is a vocabulary that I think will be useful for me in the future so yeah I take a screenshot or I take a picture on my TV and then later on I just review it maybe once or twice I hate reviewing things I have to admit that it all comes down to me being very lazy I'm so sorry <laughs> but I hate reviewing things it's just so boring for me so what I do is just constantly do new content constantly just be exposed to new content and that way a lot of things come up again 
Like uh, some words, of course, are not in your daily usage and are not going to come up very naturally. Like they are too advanced almost, where you have to make that distinction when you're an advanced level learner. Is this vocabulary too advanced? Like that's what I usually ask myself nowadays because yes, you can use it, but you will sound like a stuck up <laughs> person when you use it. Yeah, that's really amazing. You know, there are quite a lot of Mandarin learners on my channel. I think they would love to have your advice for them. Ah, uh, advice. <laughs> I feel like I'm not the one to give advice just because I feel like I did this uh, just out of love. It was just like, oh, I want to learn about the food and I want to learn how to describe food in Chinese so I have to watch a series, a documentary on food in China. So it, that is my type of process, my type of like study routine I would say. I want to talk about said topic so I need to find content that is exactly talking about that topic and just do it. <laughs> just repeat it and that's it basically. So yeah, I can really give good advice I feel like because find something that works for you and I really can't tell anybody oh you should learn like me because I know a lot of people that are in my university that if they studied like me they would get nowhere. Actually you are giving a very good advice. Okay. The most important thing is to find a connection mm -hmm. with the language. Yes. At least to find something what you are passionate about. I know you are very foodie. I know you love a Chinese food. I saw your vlogs. <laughs> you were like <laughs> constantly eating in China. But I also watched the video that you did on uh, resources for Chinese learning and a lot of those resources I do use myself. I really like the one on YouTube where it's like Mandarin Corner and uh, I love those type of content because it's not just for learners. It's more like natural content, natural like podcasts and just normal conversations between Chinese people and interviews as well where they're really casual is also very good for learning as well and then a lot of other apps like Playco like I don't know where I would be without Playco Playco I love you <laughs> like Playco is my ride or die I love Playco with all my heart so yeah um, you can do a lot nowadays because it's not like many years ago where you have to find a class that is right at your level and go there every week blah 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 now there are resources all over like youtube billy billy Xiaohongshu, everything can be a resource and that uh, you have to realize like you do not have to find resources that are just for learners you can watch whatever that you're interested in and they will become a study resource. Yeah. I think the most important thing is that you have to find the resources that you like, the contents that you like. For example, you like talk shows, you like like Ba Shuo, these kind of uh, uh, debate shows and all kinds of a series. This is your style of learning. Some people, for example, I remember I have a language exchange partner. Uh, he's Austrian and he's learning Mandarin and he has a quite a decent level as well. He's very obsessed with all kinds of historical content, all kinds of, uh, for example, like a Chen Yu Gu Shi. Maybe these kind of things is a bit boring for some people. Uh, it's a bit too difficult to learn and I recommend him Mandarin Corner and he told me that no that's not my thing my thing is to tell you gush <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you do have, yeah, it really depends on the person and you do have to know yourself, what you like and what your goals are in life and what later on, what are the things that you want to do. Uh, for me, it would not make sense to study Cheng Yu Gu Shi. It's like, and maybe sometimes if I'm interested in an idiom and I want to learn about the whole story behind it, but I would not do that every day, like uh -uh, no way, because if I did that every day, if I only used textbooks in order to learn Chinese. I feel like uh, after some time I would mm, slowly start to hate the language and I will slowly start to hate the whole process of it. So I feel like that is just like, that's it. You need to find something that works for you. And so when somebody yeah, says, absolutely. oh, give some advice, I'm like, 
it really depends. Like, it yeah. really depends. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. For example, personally, I love to watch news. It's all kind oh. of a news and documentary. But I don't really recommend to people to all watch news. Of course, it's absolutely a very good learning resource. But some people just find it boring. When Me. they find <laughs> you, here you, I am. <laughs> when you find it boring, you just can't enjoy learning this language. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Eva. Thank you for sharing you with so us much. your story and your method. Wow, methods. I didn't mention even one single method, but thank you, you so much for inviting style, me. Your method. You have my own style. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much yeah. for inviting me. You're really a person that a lot of language learners do look up to. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk about my method. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Eva. Thank you. <laughs> See you very soon. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.